value has changed. Value used to be bottom line of a company, how much money they make, how much market share they have. And now you have companies such as Snapchat or other company that goes IPO without making any profit because data, we don't, we don't know how to measure the value of data. In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. When you look at Swissborg, 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 Swissborg is sorti ce matin. They have an app where you can buy crypto. They connect to Binance, HitBTC, LMAX, and Kraken and find the best rates in the markets. What I like about Swissborg is that they have an amazing app that can directly buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also cash out as well. Through Swissborg, all assets will have a fiat gateway. And here is the thing. Premium features gives you zero fee trading. That is zero fee. Fees. If you want to buy Bitcoin with fiat, I suggest you buy through Swissborg rather than Coinbase. And if you're interested in trading the likes of Ethereum or Bitcoin, use Swissborg's application. Everything, the, the, the banknote that we have in our pocket, gold, anything in life arises from a belief system. So you need to believe what the majority of people believe to make money in the market anyway, as an investor. And these people make more money than Warren Buffett or traditional investors. I think that's one of the coolest things about this space is, you know, for those who are taking risk, quote unquote risk, and, and you love to talk about asymmetrical return assets, right? Uh, it's, I, when I look at the best performing hedge funds in 2018, 2019, well, 2018 was tough for us, but 2019, 2020, and of course, 2021 is looking good. But when I can see that I can 10x the average, me, a random Joe, the average guy can more than 10x the performance of the best hedge fund in the world. It makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm like, wow, the crypto space is so cool. And you know, again, I think we have a thinking system that do not encourage people to think by themselves. So let me give you an example. We say, if you go to see a professional investor, he will tell you, oh, you must diversify. So you may take, for example, yield, you must, you have this much money of inve uh, to invest and you should take a bit of that and a bit of that and a bit of that. Even if you don't believe in it, you should invest. So for example, if you have 100K to invest, you should buy 80% of US Treasury, 10% of Tesla, I don't know, and, and 10% of S&P, right? Even if you don't believe in it. That's what the guys will tell you. My advice will be to say, because you have a risk, for example, when we calibrate this kind of portfolio, we, we have a good, uh, uh, we can fairly say that you're not gonna lose more than 10K, for example. So 10% of your portfolio. But if you don't believe in it, the risk adjust return will not be good because again, investment is all about finding a symmetric scenario. So remember, the trader that earn money are the ones that lose a little and they learn, earn a lot. For my grandma, Susie, can you explain what is an asymmetric uh, return asset in a very easy, simple way? That'd be great. Yeah. So asymmetry of return arise when, uh, for example, the potential of earning is much higher than the potential of losing money. So when you invest, for example, in Bitcoin at 1,000, you should ask yourself, when I, when I put 1,000 in Bitcoin, if it goes back to zero, then my, my risk is 1,000. But what is the probability that it goes above 2K? Because above 2K is already, I'm making more profit than I'm risking money. What is the probability that it go to 10K? Then I'm making 9K, but my risk is 1K, right? So asymmetry 
And of course, you need to weight that with probability a bit. Let's keep this concept aside because, and, and when you think about it, there is few assets with this property where you can, um, it, goes, it can go much more higher and it goes go down, right? So now Bitcoin is at 30K. What's the probability that it goes to zero or it rise above 60K? And of course, the more mature an asset become, the less asymmetry you will find. And that asymmetry, just going connecting it with a nonlinear activity, usually happens in very short spans, as you were saying, right? Which is, yeah. <laughs> and you can't predict them because you can't predict those crazy Bitcoin things. will say the same value yeah. for, one year, for one year, and then and, sh then <laughs> and change the, its phase. Yeah. That's nonlinearity because in in two, three, so the amount of information will be condensated on a very st short time frame, right? And then it's nice. So already those two, like that sounds like a superpower almost, right? If you have, if you understand non-linear activity and you combine that with finding or really seeking to have exposure to asymmetrical return assets, the two together is like a superpower. No? It's superpower. And, and to connect with what we say, saying one of your question was, how can I learn to be a better investor? Yeah. So let's forget about investment specifically. Now, if I reflect on my life, as a human, I can tell there is a period of my life where nothing happened. I'm here, for example, I'm a student, nothing happened for a year. And then all of a sudden I become graduated. I have a new job, someone sent me to Japan and I was a student in Paris. I met someone and I'm getting married. In, so in a, in a matter of three months, so much happened, right? And relative before. to the year before where you're sleeping, playing the PlayStation. Or exactly, <laughs> that's non-linearity. Sometimes in one day, it would the one day would change your life. Change your life yeah. And you were seeking for this day for three years, 10 years. That's non-linearity. So when you become aware, when you become conscious of this thing in your life, then you can apply the same rule in, in, in investment, uh, right? Uh, so it's crazy. So these life instances that we have, and I'm sure everyone out there can really resonate with that, where they realize during six months, nothing changed. They've been working constantly, but then suddenly results happened. So the markets are the same. Everything is, you believe it's all built in a non-linear fashion. Exactly. So markets are built the same way. They are built out of human behavior. Yeah. yeah? And it's life. It's, um, you know, you have uh, the fa famous mathematician Bando, um, Benoit Mandelbrot that say the smallest pattern could explain, so the, sum, the smallest fraction of pattern can explain the biggest pattern. So when you, there is this fantasy that even a, a very small tick in the market can explain big movement. It is like, you know, that um, a butterfly movement can create a tsunami in, uh, you know, in other places. So that's the same is there is a build up and we need to accept that. And we need to accept that not every day, not every second, not every minute are with the same amount of information, with the same amount of, um, of power, right? So when you're setting targets, because it's so nonlinear, when you're setting targets, is it better, so we just, it's better to not put a timeline on it at all, right? Just say, this is the target if you want to set your own goal, this is the target where I want to take profit, or this is the target where without any timeline, right? Is, yeah. is that the ultimate? Because if you set a timeline, then you're going into that, you're going against the non-linear activity again. It's the same in life. Let me, let, me, let me give you an example. If you say, for example, by 20, or when you're 20 and say by 30, I want to get married, then that's my target. Yeah. Maybe you're not ready. <laughs> and or maybe you'll marry the wrong person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to hit the target, yeah. which and is like a bad trade. Exactly. <laughs> So then you end up losing just time. Yeah. So now you need to, you, you get married at 30 because that was your goal, okay. you know, and, and you want that absolutely. You, you get married to the wrong person, now you're 45 and you need to restart all over again. So you're just losing time by wanting to fit life into your agenda. Same apply with markets, right? You have a conviction, you believe of something, let this thing happen, right? Be, be in the acceptance that if you're confident and wrong case scenario, you'll learn something. Yeah. 
you learn for the next step, your next investment or your, you, you know, the next time. Yeah. And that will be the build up, right? It's because even if you fail, as long as you recognize it, you're conscious, right? That you had the wrong habit and corrected to build a, the right habit. That's fine, right? I mean, everyone falls, everyone makes mistakes. I remember reading the book Market Wizards, which talks about some of the best traders in the world. Every single one, when you look at their Wikipedia, Anthony, every single one got liquidated, like borderline homeless. The biggest trades in history, at one point they were here, the other point they were down there in the sewers almost, right? Isn't that the same with entrepreneur? You know, I read very good biography. Uh, I don't know, the guy, the French guy from um, Iliad, Free, Elon Musk, or the guys from Airbnb. And, and what is amazing is you feel, you, f you find that um, most of these guys that have been extremely successful in the past 10 years, most of these guys were geek or were introverts. Yeah. And when you think about it, it's not a surprise because when you're an introvert, you're not surrounded by noise or you're not paying attention to the outside world. You're really focusing yourself. You really focus in what you believe in, despite that many people will tell you, you're crazy, it's not gonna happen, it's not rational. But you're so focused on yourself that then you find your own way and then you dictate the, your reality and you embrace your own reality and you start to create amazing things. Same happened with investments. It's the same. Once you find who you are, then all of a sudden you can dance with the music. Right? And Sometimes you don't need to understand the lyrics of music to dance on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you truly need to connect to your emotion and who you are to dance on your music. Even if you understand the lyrics, it will not help you to dance yeah, with the rhythm. Yeah. That's what life is about. It's not, sometimes we, fo we are too focusing on understanding the lyrics, trying to you know, understand the meaning. Meanings means nothing. Sometimes yeah. it's just to awake emotion. This reminds me of those uh, chartists that have like 270 lines you know, on their trading view and you're like, what the hell is going on <laughs> there? If that's uh, their poesy, that's fine. Yeah. But you, you, you must be inspired by all these guys, but you will be at the end responsible for that and you need to find your own techniques. Um, that's how you, be, you achieve, you can achieve your own success because again, success is very vague definition yeah, you yeah. should define what is success for what you success for you again self-discovery self inner reflection right and stuff like that and that sounds like the perfect transition to poker and trading or making bets one of your favorite books what was it called again the one of your favorite it's not books. one of my favorite but that that's one what i like is thinking in bets thinking in bets yeah. so you have to tell us anthony like not just you but many poker players tend to do very well in crypto as well. There's some YouTubers who were famous poker players and they made even more money in crypto than they did with poker. There must have been some, there must be some transferable skills, you know, when you go from one world to the other. And obviously you're talking about, you know, it's all about the mindset, nonlinear activity, asymmetrical risk return, learning from not getting stuck into poor habits. Uh, so what, what did you learn? Is, did you take any life lessons as an investor by playing poker? Because you talked about that when you were a kid, how you loved playing card games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I would say, of course, you need to master the analytic part of the game, right? If you come to finance, you don't know what's a bid and a ask, or you don't know what the trend is, or you can read the news. There's no chance you're gonna make money, that's fine, right? But you, so you need to have a minimum of analytical skills. You need to understand the rules. Like, if you play poker, you don't know the rules. Yeah. There's almost no chance you're gonna make money on the long term. But that's easy, anyone can learn the analytical part of the game, that's the rules. And you need to learn them and to be 100% square on that. But then what makes a great player as opposed to uh, an average player? Because both of them know very well analytical part of the game. The capacity to, first of all, understand the behavior, so have a psychological aspect to it, right? So, <clears throat> what's the state of the market? Is it euphoria? Do, do I have additional, uh, um, do I have additional, for example, information that I can get, not necessarily in the graph itself, but from different other aspects that help me to take my decision? So, for example, in poker, it means that I'm facing an opponent, and this opponent may be I've lost the two previous games, he's really upset right now because of the ego, 
right? Give me an indication of his mindset right now. So I might know that he's a, very, you know, he's a professional player, a very analytical mind, he played this way, I've observed him, but now he's in a state, an emotional state that is different from his usual behavior. And I need to infuse that in my game, that I can make the, the, and the right, and I can use my analytical st uh, skill set but adapt to the current market. Make him, like, it's for him to make irrational decisions, right? Yes. You use that, you yes. point at him, yeah. So one of the examples, if you look at the Bitcoin chart, you can see if we have a parabolic movement and all these things, but maybe you can learn from the future market. You look, for example, at the spread, because the sp between the spot market and the future market, when the spread is really high, it means that there is a huge demand on buying the future market, which means that people are rushing to buy the market. They don't care about the price, they're ready to pay a premium, which means that there is a kind of euphoria. And then, as of today, when, as today we see the case, the, the, the spread <coughs> between December and January went banana, now it collapsed, meaning that there is less and less appetite. There is less and less velocity, there is less and less juice, and we're already at the all-time high on the open interest market. Give me additional tools to understand beside the graph, beside what I can read in the news, what is the psychology? Are we exhausted by the, or do we have more room to grow? So yeah, I, I guess the, the great, greatest learning of poker is beside knowing the rules and knowing your probability and, and playing with probability that sometimes that the only tools that you have, but sometimes you have additional tools. And you need to feel comfy with playing with all the information that are available at the moment. And they will change. They change all the time. That's why it's so tiring to be an investment, an investor. And that's why sometimes it's about understanding the fundamentals and uh, finding someone that can manage your money for you, right? Or finding a system that can do the hard work for you. Uh, because if you have maybe only 10K or 100K to invest, maybe the amount of of work that is required for you to make something sustainable is too much, maybe. Could be your passion, of course, and you, you like to, uh, to invest your own money, but you, you know, you need, most of the time is, that's why it's valuable to give your money to someone that you could trust or a company that you, that you trust. And again, about diversification, and I, I think one of the greatest poker players, they have huge conviction. Sometimes you need to accept as well that you have your analysis, you have your the amount, amount of information available and all these things. And it, sometimes it's about trusting your guts, trusting your feeling, trusting your instinct. That you can only develop by experiencing, by being there and, and playing and learning. And speaking of which, you know, the gut feeling is really interesting. There's a book called Thinking Fast and Slow. Have you read it? Uh, it's a Nobel Prize winner. It's, it's a really cool book, but it, it reminds me of what you told me earlier, actually. There's, it's been proven you know, through, through psychological studies and, and, and research that the gut feeling is not an emotion exactly. Uh, that you know, your, your brain, your subconscious mind processes so much data. So it's actually data that's stored in the brain. And they, they give an example, a really cool example of this guy. He's walking through Central Park in New York and there are some chess tables, right? The people play chess in, uh, in New York, uh, you know, on a nice summer day, you know. And a guy who's played chess his entire life, and it re probably relates to traders as well who see the charts right away, they can, they feel it's gut feeling, which yeah. some people may portray as an emotion, but it's actually lots of data over the years of looking at charts. But you know, the, the chess player goes and he sees one of the, the games and he said, in two plays, chess mate. And they just stop there with a camera. They're looking at a camera crew. Two plays, chess mate. Next one, four to five plays, chess mate. And he would call every table, like perfectly, just seeing it. And they're like, oh, how does your gut feeling do that? And long story short, you know, the, the gut feeling was, was more of a superpower of, of ultra data processing in, in the subconscious mind. And I'm sure, yeah. Sorry to cut you, because I no, thought it was no, a good way to interject it, something. I, I think that's a beautiful example. And you know, one of the examples that we'll use as well is sometimes the, the problem is we, we have language. This is how we communicate. This is what we're doing now. But the single terminology sometimes do not explain a full range of um, other things like feelings. So, and I, I think interacting with humans sometimes when you, for example, if you have a fight with your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, or your friends, 
uh, you hardly, you, so you keep telling words, but you feel inside that, oh, but it's not really what I want to translate, you know, it's not really, the word doesn't really fit my feelings or my emotion. And the reason why is because this body, this, this mind, that is not only the conscious mind that just process languages, have an infinite range of things that is processed that words could not express, right? So sometimes we have an instinct, we have an emotion, because it's linked to a, a thousand of other connection that words cannot explain. So when you learn, when someone speak, of course you can, oh, I, I, I write everything down and now I'm gonna follow the rules, but actually that wouldn't be not enough because maybe it will communicate a bunch of other things with you that will connect with your past experience and you will progress this way, not in conscious, co conscious fashion, but you will progress anyway. And I think words hardly describe everything. And uh, sometimes we pay too much attention to words. So let's experience. I think that's, that's and, and being open with that, right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's funny, I, all the dots are connecting in my mind right now. Of you telling me that most traders do not make money, it's just like poker players, most gamblers or people go to casino, even though they do win sometimes, over the long run, they lose more money than they make, but they're just, they have this illusion that, you know, I made probably enough to cover all those losses, but long term, usually it's, it probably is the same ratio, no? Like 80, 90%. Yeah, and, and, and you know, when I, uh, when I work in finance, obviously there is many other poker player. And I met someone that was a professional for, uh, was a colleague of mine when I was in London. And, was, uh, and he told me, you know, when I was at school, then I dropped school because I wanted to become a professional poker player. And the reason why is I played for a year and I was con all the time making money. All the time, all the time. So I was so confident about my strategy and my skill set. And as soon as I dropped school, I started to lose everything. Everything. But I, I was surrounded by professional, other professional, and, and, and one night I was so sad, right, because I felt shit. I lose all my money, I, 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 I quit school, so I was terrible. And I went with one of the guy, you know, one of the other poker professional that was doing this, this, this game for a long time. And we, we started to discuss and he started to analyze my game and he came with very frank analysis and he said, Maybe you were lucky for a long period of time, or year, one year. Because when I look at your game, I don't think you're, you're, you can be a professional. And he said, what I learned from that is, you can be extremely lucky for a long period of time, and you, you don't know that. So it's only by experience that you will find out if you're just lucky, of, or if actually you develop something special about your investment skill or strategy skill. And again, it changed all the time as well. And that's the most difficult part of, and that's exactly what we, we are witnessing with traditional investment right now, because value has changed. Value used to be bottom line of a company, how much money they make, uh, how, how much market shares they have. And now you have companies such as Snapchat or other company that goes IPO without making any profit because data, we don't, we don't know how to measure the value of data. Right, because it's not necessarily translated to financial profit. I can give you a very simple example. If you have two countries, one is very conservative and do not allow Wikipedia. So they still, because people want to be educated, they still buy encyclopedia. And the other is normal country and you have access to Wikipedia, so no one is selling encyclopedia because it's very bad business. Actually, the way we measure value, right, for a country is based on the GDP. So the one that is not with Wikipedia, that is selling encyclopedia, because encyclopedia will make for a company a financial profit, will have a higher GDP. So it's to tell you how dumb our system of value works, yeah. right? We have one that is less advanced, and now we, we work in this, you know, we live in this very open source world. <clears throat> what is value is oddly, uh, it's, it's hard to describe and we need elite to work on this kind of subject that we can finally measure value and get our investment methodology evolved as well. And that's why the, you know, the, the traditional investors are failing so much these days. Yeah, because they're, they're not able to measure the value of 
crypto, like cryptocurrency, for example, right? Like the tokens, the assets, they think it's all purely speculative, no fundamentals. It's crazy. It's because they want to be defensive. They yeah. do, again, they, they want their clock, they want their theory to be true. But market evolves and you will be always wrong. So you need to embrace new reality. You need to accept that what is working today is maybe not work tomorrow and that's life. So Anthony, that really reminds me of a great quote of Socrates, which is, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Beautiful. So Socrates said that, you know, yeah. so is, is that kind of like the perfect quote to qualify, you know, all these traditional guys who believe crypto is purely speculative, Warren Buffett, all these people missing this wave? Of course, and you see, what we find out tonight is to be a great investor, you must be a philosopher as well, yeah. right? <laughs> that's what we find out. Yeah, I, I guess that's what we witness right now is um, because people are, have been raised, that, that's what you learn at school, right? Um, but society has changed. I think uh, we, what we are going to witness in the coming years is um, a lot of change, and especially because of the money, fiat money, government money. Is, you know, one of the stats that surprised me the most is it took like 100 years for the U.S. government to print a trillion dollar of U.S. dollar. It took 12 years to print the same amount of, of money, a tri another trillion, and it took only three months last year to print the same amount of money. So again, linearity, not the same, 100, 100 years, 10 years, 12 years, three months. So money is of course, we are in the Bitcoin business, the, the cryptocurrency world, the philosophy. We, are, we always have as forward thinkers that have seen that before anyone else, but money is gonna change. What, what will it mean for humanity? I don't know, you know? But money has constantly evolved in terms of shape and, and form across years. And of course, because we live for so little um, as human, we always believe that what we are experiencing has been true forever, but it's not the case, right? And there's one thing I like about you, Anthony, is like you really don't care that much about money. It's not, <laughs> it's not a big deal for you, which is you've stayed the same and, and I think that's fantastic. Um, and I, I really, so just, I really want to go back to the very beginning where you fell in love with cards, then you talked about the psychology, the self-exploration, uh, non-linear activity. We talked about finding asymmetrical return assets. And then we talked about how poker uh, you know, helped you build some right habits. And now we're talking a little bit about crypto, but I would like to fast forward to the future of crypto. And you're, you're a strong believer in wealth management over investing and trading as, as the, the ultimate product for crypto mass adoption and, and the future of that. So I would love to ask you, what is the future uh, in terms of crypto investments or wealth management? And also what are some other trends that you see coming this year or years to come that really fascinate you? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, what fascinates me the most is maybe crypto will facilitate a better redistribution of wealth because the wealth gap uh, is going crazy, and right? widening as well. It's widening crazy like never been before. And, and even in developed, what we call developed countries. Yeah. So maybe that's our chance to just redistribute the cards in a fairly way. That amazed me because how much is enough, right? We are here, we are extremely privileged people already. Do I need much more than that, right? Or uh, tyrannize the others? So th that's one question I leave it aside, but that's what I like a lot about crypto because it facilitates tribes, movement, and, and redistribution of wealth, and creation of wealth. And, and we just, you know, make the traditional money funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So, that, that, that's what I like. Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of crypto on a, let's say, short to medium term, what I like the most is we have healed. And 15 year, like 50 years ago, that was the main business of bank because country were giving yields, believe it or not. You know, my grandmother, with our bank, make a deposit of, you know, a salary and she was earning money. Now, positive society, positive ecosystem, value creation, you earn money. And one of the biggest business of private bank was to, oh, now we have <clears throat> yield, we can create portfolio where Part of your money is invested with yield and 
Because of this yield, we can create a pocket that is more risky. So we can create, for example, a portfolio where 80% goes to yield, that you, over time, you protect your capital, that maybe in three years, if you invest 100, if you have 10%, then uh, if you invest, uh, I don't know, 80% of your capital over the course of two, three years, you're gonna make back your 100 that you invest in first place. So the 20%, we can invest in more risky assets. Because of course, the volatility of Bitcoin can be quite impressive. Now we have institutional players coming in, it's still a very tiny market, so it could be manipulated. So maybe, you know, non-informed uh, investor or non-informed user will lose money, which is sad because when they lose money, there is always someone that make big profit. So I think one of the mission of the next player will, make, will be to, to build product, to engineer product that are easy to use, but they help as well people to get an exposure to crypto in a very smart way. So mixing yield with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, with great project indexes. Uh, and I guess that's one of the mission that we're really excited about at SwissBorg as well, is how can we build products that are not only about <clears throat> being a trader or being a, an investor because you need to have balls right, <laughs> to, to invest in project. And it's not for everyone and we need to accept that. We need yeah. to feel comfy with that. But we have the chance to have ecosystem that create value and yields, and we can extract these yields and we can build a great, tool, great product that will allow a very large range of users to come and to, to have their first experience with crypto, not a traumatic experience, but a very good experience. With, an automated, with automated systems, right? I, I remember you, like, you hammer that all the time at SwissBorg. We don't like this DIY stuff. We want automation, automation, automation. What do you mean by that? Like, yeah, doing both, yeah. But what do you mean by like uh, automation or automating products? Like, is it like you're saying, trying to reach main, the, the, the mass or the most people who just do not have the, like you said, the, the balls to, to trade or, or get involved too deep in finance? I think automation, most of the automation tools that we will find will promise you performances. To me, it's not about that. Yeah. Automation should be just something that helps you to do something that you could have done by yourself, if you were either an expert or if you have enough time to do that. So automation could be only useful if you provide, first of all, the tools that you can understand what you invest in. So that you have a belief in what you invest. You're not saying, oh, this guy are the expert. I'm gonna give my money, it's automated, and, I'm gonna and I'm, I hope that I'm gonna make more money. Because when you invest, not only the goal is to make a financial profit, but if you don't, you must learn something that next time you, you'll be better. Purpose over profit. That's yeah, a, that's you profit. always say that, right? What, what exactly does that mean, purpose? Or, because it does, like, I, I can see your, your quote, you know, this, this phrase or catchphrase saying purpose over profit because sometimes, you know, as you said, Tesla is not necessarily making the most money of all the, the, the car companies in the world, but it has the highest market cap and valuation, right? Is that what it is? It's because people think Elon Musk is a rock star or, or is... First of all, why uh, Tesla is so of a high value? Because it's a loving brand. Right. Everyone loves Tesla. So when Tesla dropped 10%, no one cares. They buy more yeah. because they are in love. Is it wrong? Is it for? I don't want to. I don't want to say. It. I, I don't want. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter at the end. What we learned tonight is, one of the component of being a successful trader, is to understand your own psychology. So when you connect to your belief, then, when you invest in something and it drops or it puts pressure on you, because, that's how we measure, uh, if we are right or wrong then you will feel more comfy. And you will, your ability to take a better decision, to take a good decision next, because investment is about taking a lot of decisions. It's, it's a process of taking decision after decision, is making decision all the time. So your ability to make the right decision after your first investment, investing is fine, it's easy. It's how you're gonna get out, what is your next move, that's the complicated part. But when you're connected to something that you believe in, that is aligned with your purpose, then it becomes more fluent. The psychological part that is the root of a successful investor is good. It makes a lot of sense. You know, like I had sometimes like literally insider 
insider information for some coins and tokens that were very likely to pump. But because I didn't feel connected to what they do, I didn't think it was the right fit for me, maybe not the right principles and values, I didn't invest. And I never regretted. Exactly. I never regretted. Yeah. I but saw the token moon and I didn't care. But if you have invested, and sometimes you, know, you can be disappointed because the expected behavior was not the, the initial one, you will be mad at you, yeah, you and you will so feel shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what you shouldn't do, because investment shouldn't, shouldn't be here to put more pressure on your life. Yeah. It should be something that helps you to have a better life. And I, I guess most of the people will fail in investment because they look for a lottery ticket to exit yeah. their life. Like, I want to find a magic medicine to my life. No. You need to fix your life if you're not happy with, with that. Uh, Investment can help. Reverse. It's not going to help to fix everything. You need to get your shit done with your life. <laughs> right? um, and then you become a better trader anyway, or a better investor anyway, so it helps. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, essentially, that, that, that's what it is. And again, when we, when we say um, automation at SwissBorg, it could be only powerful when you provide true transparency and when you empower a user to say, we're going to facilitate your work, but you still need to understand what you invest in. Because you are responsible. You will not blame me at the end if it don't, do not perform to the level you were expected. And I, I think that's the beauty of crypto as well. You know, of course, a lot of people lose money during the ICO period in 2017. But I guess at least they learned something. In 2008, when everyone all the population that lose money because of the mess with CDOs and all this shit with real estate in the US and other parts of the world, here in Dubai as well, no one learns nothing yeah. because you can blame the banker. Oh, uh, yeah. you know, he did wrong. But when you give your money to someone, you're responsible for that. It's an investment, it's already a decision. And you know what, like just to wrap this up, it seems like, you know, if you really love, like you said, that whatever their company, the people, the leader, the product, uh, anything, if you're really a fan of it, that helps directly with your first point about non-linearity, right? Or linearity. Yeah. You because would. you won't feel like, oh, I need to make a profit with this stock by the end of this month or in six months. You're just like, I love it so much. I don't mind just holding it. And I believe yeah. in it's, it's, it's growth. And I think we have a very good example at SwissBorg because we went from an ICO at 10 cents, below one cents, and not the back, back to 50 cents. Yeah. And maybe sometimes in, and of course these people, it puts a lot of pressure on, on yeah. themselves. But maybe the right decision will say, no, I still believe in this project. I want to stick to it and I'm going to invest more. And some of them say, I'm going to quit because it's putting too much pressure. I don't believe in the project anymore. And maybe the money that they get out of the project, they invest in something else and they were extremely successful as well. So there is no rules. No rules yeah. At the end of the day, you must feel extremely comfy in what you're doing. And for that, the graph only or the performance only will not help you to resolve that. Because everyone has his own clock. We are Swiss, Swiss Borg, so we are slow, kind, kind of <laughs> slow, maybe. Uh, but we want to deliver quality value and we never compromise on that, right? Never we met no so shortcuts. many people, no shortcut. no shortcut. And I think that was one of the success of Sweden. Uh, we never say yes. The hard way. The hard way. And it was hard, right? Because even as a founder, which is a part of, it's kind of an investment as well, or being as you, you know, like in the very beginning of the project, it puts pressure on you. You yeah. question yourself, am I right? But if you align with your purpose, you say, again, I'm continue my thinking, I'm going to continue my strategy, it's not necessarily paying off now, but I know on the long term it will pay off. And it paid off. And it will continue. It will continue. Yeah, I think the ultimate lesson from this interview is really from inwards outwards, right? Intrinsic to extrinsic <laughs> and really soul searching, going deep into yourself to understanding yourself not just for life, for trading, for investing, and everything is interconnected in some sort of way, right? It is, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it is. It's amazing, brother. I'm so happy you finally got to do this interview. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. For all those watching out there, Antonio Swami, co-founder at SwissBorg, one of the most successful projects in 2020, number four in terms of best performing tokens, and this year the kickoff has been really, really good. 
don't forget to follow Anthony. Seriously, he's <laughs> one of those guys behind the scenes with massive brains that not many people realize and perhaps even smarter than some of the people who are in front of the cameras all the time, like myself, for instance. You're so, very intelligent, my friend. <laughs> so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and blast that bell notification so you can get access to more timeless interviews with very, very interesting people. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. See you next week, premiering at a PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. Peace, guys. Yeah.